Listen, part one is done. Now we move on to part two. I think you're going to really like part two. It's a real interesting project. It's been a real good project for me. I enjoyed it. Got to use my hands. Uh, that's always a good thing. But without further ado, here is part two. I opted to frame the inside of my uh, walls up a little bit different than uh, what I've seen on the TV. I've got the inside framed up now. This is the part that's going to be on the inside of the house. This is Max, my oldest son. He's helping me temporarily. Uh, and this is going to be on the inside of the house. What I did is I put my boards down and I tacked everything down with some nails. I'm going to drive the screws in on the other side. Go ahead and lay it down for me, Max. I did the same thing on the outside of this. I'm going to drive screws in through this direction. About every 10 to 12 inches, I've drilled holes around where that framing is. And I'm going to go back now and put the uh, screws in there, the wood screws, the, the long ones, like I showed you at the beginning of uh, putting the house together. All right, this is one side. Just about done with this side. Then I just got to do the other side. I'll check back in here in a minute. All right, this is the base. I moved it into the pin area here. What I decided to do was uh, underneath the uh, concrete blocks I'm going to put down that I'm going to set the base on, I decided to put some rocks down. I had some low places down there, and I want the house up uh, as high as it can get. Uh, in this area, sometimes it becomes a low area, and water will gather. So I'm trying to put everything up as high as it will go. But this is the base. I'm about to start assembling the sides, and then I'll just uh, put on the front and the back, which won't be as uh, challenging as the other parts have been. Almost at the end of this project. And my son is supposed to paint it for me. We'll see if he does that. This is one of my dogs here. Checking out his domain. There's another one. This is the rest of the uh, pen area. I'm going to clean all that up. My plan also is to put rocks all over this area so that we don't have a lot of mud when it does rain and so that the rain water will flow right on through the rocks and the dogs can step on top of the rocks. I think that'll be a pretty neat area for them. It's coming together. Be back in a little bit. Buzzing in again, getting the roof together now. I uh, got the uh, felt laid down, black felt that goes under the shingles. Went ahead and got my drip guards so that the water won't drip down under the shingles and start that roof to rotting. That's what this is right here. Putting them all the way around the edges. That's so the water will run off, hit the drip guard, and drop down. It won't go up under those shingles. This will stop leaking in your house. But ended up cutting out a 48 by 50 size roof. And that's going to cover both the sides exactly. And I want a little overhang over the back so the water will run off uh, and uh, run, on, run on the ground from that point. What he's doing is he's tacking, uh, tacking down that end. Okay, so we got both sides did and framed up. In there in the pen waiting to be assembled. The base is already in there. That turned out pretty good. Measures 48 by 48. For a medium sized dog, I think that's going to be just fine. Working on the roof right now. Give me a brief minute to walk over there and I'll click back in. Working on the roof right now. Give me a minute to move over there uh, at the work area and I'll come back. Just a minute. All right. This is the back part of the roof right here. You want to go ahead and put your shingles starting at the base. And what I did was cut up one shingle and just put it around the base right here so that this area, area is covered. Also because you've got these holes in the shingles the, where they separate. And then I felt you needed a base that those can fall down on so the water can't get underneath. Keep in mind the water will be flowing this way. So it shouldn't be any problem with it getting underneath. Basically it's secondary to gravity but I still want to put one little piece down the uh, base, uh, the very base of the, uh, the roof itself. 
And all I did was cut one of these in half right here. And I put that around the base of the, uh, the back of the roof. So again, this is going to be the down area. And I'm going to work my way up, overlapping the shingles as I go up. Yeah, I just wanted to interject something. This is the second day of the project. Could have got it done yesterday if I'd have got the uh, shingles in time, but I didn't, so I had to postpone it. So today, uh, as I said a little while ago, I'm going to finish the roof up. A little sad today. One of my puppies died last night. Got caught under one of the pieces that was uh, left in the kennel. Uh, have no idea how it happened, but somehow it turned over on the puppy, and the puppy was caught underneath. We didn't find that out till this morning when we got up. Unfortunately, the puppy passed away. Uh, I just got six, and uh, would rather have adopted all of them out instead of any of them die, dying. Uh, but again, we're going to go ahead and finish this project. All right, just continuing the sheetrocking process. I'm going to have this done in the next uh, 15, 20 minutes. And then we can move on to getting the sides up and uh, getting the front and back on. Check back in in a minute. All right, what I've done is I've layered the shingles down in a nice formation to get the coating and the coloring right. What he's doing now is leveling out what needs to be the little cosmetic areas. But uh, I'll be back with you in a short moment. All right. The roof is now done. Now we can move on to the next phase of the project, getting my sides up, getting my front and back up, and we'll pretty much be done. Uh, also, when picked up some flooring material, kind of like the grass stuff, you can get it from Home Depot. I got... Uh, 48 by 48 for like 12 bucks and I'm just going to put it on the inside to add a degree of comfort for the puppies and Trina alright now I put the uh, flooring in left low gaps at the end because I got wood that's going to cover those but we're just about done just about ready to put the structure up and that's what I'm about to do now once I get the sides up I'll put the front up then I'll put the back up. Then we can drop the roof, and then we'll be done. Be back in a minute. All right. Inside the house now. Here's one of the sides. We're getting the flooring together inside now. Got some inside-outside carpet, the green stuff that looks uh, similar to grass. But this is why I did mine a little bit different than the design I've seen on the Internet. Uh, I put this 2x4 flat. Holes on the side coming in here, and I put this flat because I wanted it to have a good footing uh, horizontally. So that's going to give me more stability, I feel. And of course, in this corner here, you see this 2 by 4 goes down, and I got them lined up with a little shim at the bottom there to, to make sure that everything's uh, lined up as straight as possible. Okay. Then I ran a board down the inner upper side, and I secured all of this with screws, okay? This is going to hold the roof up. Once the roof is down, it won't be sitting necessarily directly on the uh, plywood itself, or it'll have some reinforcement right below the plywood. The back's the same way. We've still got to put the back on. Uh, this is my son, Max. He's uh, professionally installing the flooring for the dogs, and I can tell you, I'm sure they're going to appreciate it. It's going to be uh, aesthetically pleasing to them, I believe. All we got to do now is put the back on and the other part of the front. I do want to make a comment about one thing. The first board like this I had, I made a rookie move. I cut it squarely in the middle, which would give the dog very little privacy on that side or on that side. So I had another piece here. Didn't have to go buy another one. Had another one lying around. So what I did was went ahead and cut the doorway a little offset to the right so that the dogs can go in and come over on this side and have privacy if they want to be in there without uh, anybody being able to see them or they want to relax in the shade. So again, cut your door offset to one side so that the dogs will have some privacy within uh, the doghouse itself, okay? 
And I did everything in here with the screws, like I said. That's one thing I held true with the uh, video I found on the internet. I think the screws are going to hold it more firmly and make it more of a permanent structure. This is a one-time build doghouse. It's going to be here until the dogs go away, which I hope it never happens. I'm kind of starting to like these puppies. But again, I got six of them. If somebody out there wants one, just contact me. Be back in a minute. Okay, here we are. We're just about at the tail end of the project. The sun's going down. We got the house basically set up. All we have left to do is the roof. As you see, the flooring looks perfect. There's one of my puppies getting used to uh, a rather mark in his spot in the corner there. That's going to be his spot. Well, we got everything set up, the uh, flooring down, and this should be a pretty nice inside of a doghouse for them. Sealed up pretty tight. I'm going to run some caulk along the sides. What we're going to do now is get the roof on, and I'm going to put the roof on in a way that we can take it off in case we uh, need to get it in. So I'm going to be putting a 2 by 4 under the roof that when the roof is put on, it's going to slide back and connect up against that to hold the roof on. Uh, I'm going to lay it sideways underneath so it's got a good flat surface where it can catch all the weight. Uh, the roof is about 50, 60, 70 pounds, give or take, if that. So I'm sure this will hold it. Don't want to bolt it down right now because I still want to go inside and caulk up the inside of the uh, of the house here. Everything went well. It took me about two days uh, for one person, first house, whole nine. But I'm pretty sure I can flip one of these in about a day. Uh, at this point, now that I've had the experience of building one, and for this house, as I said on the front end, I basically looked on the internet. Basically seen the design, seen one built, and then I came back and pretty much modified that to fit my own purposes and pretty much eyeballed everything here. If you've got a little uh, mechanical knowledge, you can do this same thing. You're going to need your drill, your saw to rip your wood. You're going to need some nails and some other supplies. At the end of this, I'll go ahead and list all the supplies I bought and uh, give some recommendations. Be back in a minute. All right, I'm back. I'm going to show you a little bit of the outside of the house. Turned out pretty good. Like we talked about on the front end, there's a slant for my roof. Shouldn't have any problem with the water running right down and dripping off the back. On the back edge, I gave about an inch or two over on the back to let the water run right off, and hopefully none will run right down the back of the house. I'm doing everything within my power to make this water tight because I don't want to have to get out here and do anything else to it. So I figured I'd do it right. And again, there's my front door. I offset it to the right some so that the dogs can go in and they'll have that area and they can get back in that corner and have uh, plenty of shade. I was going to face the house toward the sun, but I'm not uh, so that the dogs can lay in there uh, from time to time. And as you see, they're already running in and out. This is a new thing for them, and uh, as discussed on the front end, this is going to get them out of my garage. The things they've done to my garage are enough to get anybody put in jail. Yeah, they bumping their heads a little bit. Finding territory. Stop. No, no. No, no. Stop. Here are the other two sitting over here waiting on the, the house to be done. This is the finished product of the house. Turned out pretty good. When I say turned out pretty good, I mean as far as the uh, building process. The painting process I left to my son, and it appears he ain't Michelangelo, but he plans to go back and finish this up. The roof area turned out pretty good. Had to make a few adjustments to the roof to uh, get it to work, uh, uh, but everything worked out. And as you see, the house is nice and solid. The dogs themselves love the house. They are in this house all the time. And when it rains and whatnot, uh, it protects them well. And since I have it off the ground, everything worked out real well. It's less likely to start rotting out at the bottom. I really did enjoy this project. Uh, getting back to cutting wood and putting things together. And I think men in general just like to hammer and beat on things. Also, 
This was not my color selection. This is my son's color selection. Again, I handle the building. He handles the painting and finish work. And as you see, mine is done. His is not quite dead yet. So let's get an interview from him. Mr. Maurice Azrael Xavier Skilling, why have not you completed the, pro the project that we began some time ago? Uh, well, you know, I've come to find out I'm, I'm not the final arts of painting. That's not my forte. Um, I tried to blend the colors with the brick, but the brick turned out to be a little bit lighter than what I planned it on being. So I'm going to have to go back and probably pick out another coat of paint that I feel comfortable with. Tell us what technique of painting you used here. Was it a, a straight swipe technique or was it a cross thatch technique? Tell us exactly uh, what methodology you used here. We, we've been trying to figure it out, and you know we haven't come up with that uh, <laughs> exact uh, technique yet. So can you give us a little bit on that? I did it in an upward brush motion, up and downwards. Uh, it came to blend out with the with the wood quite fine, and you know that's all I did. Okay, well, we're going to have to come back to this one and uh, show you a, a better paint job once the job is done. But again, I'm the structural composer, the builder, the uh, 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 supplier, the purchaser. I'm the money man, <laughs> the person that comes up with the processes. All in all, I really enjoyed this project. Uh, putting the roof on, uh, building the house, uh, and more so, getting them dogs at my garage. Now my garage smells wonderful again, and I can go in there and work on my motorcycles and whatever else I choose. So all in all, it was a successful project. I will mention, though, as you see, I didn't lay my project directly down on the ground. As we discussed during the process, I put it up on bricks. That's treated wood on the bottom, but I still didn't want it uh, to get wet or to remain in water for extended periods. Having it up like that, there's uh, water can get under it, but it won't be sitting in the water. That should, I hope, allow the, uh, the treated wood to last a lot longer and the house to last a lot longer. We ended up keeping one of the puppies uh, of the uh, six that uh, you've seen on the front end. Uh, the rest of them we were able to find uh, good homes for. Everything turned out well. I am still going to add a door here, uh, uh, still conceiving how I'm going to do that, but I'm going to cover that so when it rains, the rain doesn't rain directly into the house. Word to the wise. The carpet I put down on the inside, you might want to let that one go. As you see, they tore it right up. I, I don't know why they didn't like it, but... Uh, they uh, wanted it a certain way, and they got it that way. I don't fight with them. I just uh, go with the flow. But I am going to put a door here, and I've got to come up with a way to do it. Another process I'm going to add to this in the long run is I'm going to put a window on this side and let the wind flow in and out so that they can relax inside, uh, even in the summer, and stay out of the shade. But again, all in all, this project turned out great. Enjoyed it. Uh, enjoyed uh, filming it. And... Uh, I hope you all uh, learned something from the process and uh, can get out and build your own doghouse. It was a lot less, less expensive to do it this way than to try to buy a doghouse this size or get one built this size and transport it to me. So until next time, take care.